Hi everybody, B Marquita here, also known as the Backdrop Plug. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you the steps to take to create a custom backdrop using the program GIMP. So you want to create um, the size dimensions that you want. So a lot of people do it six by six or seven by seven. Um, the standard is at eight by eight. But a rule of thumb is to multiply the dimensions by 1000 pixels on each side. So let's say you wanna do a six by eight. So six foot by eight foot. You wanna do 6,000 pixels times 8,000 pixels. So that's how that works. And to backtrack a little bit, with using the program GIMP, it is a free software that you can download by going to gimp.org, which is G-I-M-P, Dot org, and then you can follow the steps to install on your computer. And I also have a GIMP starter kit series that you can purchase. So if you could click the link below this video, you can get access to that. So that's going to show you how to set up your screen and get it to look exactly how my screen looks here. So you can see the icons, you can see the submenus. And then you can see the layers um, dock on the right hand side. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's say I wanted to do a five by seven. I so say you want to go to File, New. So again, File, New. And you're going to get a screen that looks like this. So I said, you have to multiply the dimensions by 1,000. So the width is going to be 5,000 because I want my backdrop to be five foot. So 5,000 by seven feet. So that would be 7,000. And that's going to be in pixels. And you'll notice in pixels by this PX. And if you hit the drop down menu, you'll see the different units that you can put it in, but we always work in pixels. And then click OK. And then it says that we're creating a large image. We know that, that's fine. Click OK. And then you're gonna get a canvas space that's filled in with your background color. And as you can see, I use purple a lot. So your um, background may be a different color. And let's pull from over here on the left hand side where you see your active foreground color and your active background color. So don't worry if you do not see purple, it is completely fine. So the next thing I always say to do is to save the file when you first start so that once you start working, all you have to do is click on uh, File Save as you progress through your design. So let's go to File, Save As, and then you wanna choose the folder that you wanna save it to. And you're gonna name it what you want to name it. Um, my naming convention is usually um, the first and last name of the customer, and then the size, but it's completely up to you. So I'm gonna name it. And this is gonna be for training purposes. So that's why I'm naming it that. Okay, so we're ready to get started. So I always start off with the hard part so that you can go ahead and get that part done. And what I consider the hard part is your image. So if you have a photo of like your customer or your client or you're doing it for yourself, with yourself, or your kid, anything like that. You want to remove the backgrounds from those images to make the most professional backdrop design. Okay. So how you get those pictures is by going to File, Open as Layers. So you should have these images already saved to your computer, okay? So disclaimer. So File, 
open as layers. And then you want to go into your folder and find where you have those images saved. Select that image or images. If you have multiple images, you can just hit control, hold down control or command if you're on Mac and just click on the ones that you want to add as well. So to select all of those, but I just want this one. Click open, and that's how you add your image, okay? So again, file, open as layers, file, open as layers, file, open as layers. And I'm reiterating as layers because if you open it any other way, it's going to open a brand new design space, and we don't want to do that, okay? So once we have that open, we're gonna make sure that layer is selected and we want to scale it up so that we can make it bigger on our design space and so that we can see better. So I'm gonna use the scale tool, which looks like a small box pointing into a larger box. And if you hover over it, it will say scale tool. Okay, so you just click on that with this layer selected and start dragging one of the corners. And by default, it should have the scale locked so that it uh, grows or shrinks proportionately. If it is not, just go ahead and click here. Right now it's unlocked. Click it again to lock it back to make sure that your image scales proportionately. Then you get it to the size you want. You're gonna click on scale. Okay, and now you've scaled it. And my image is actually backwards. As you can see, the writing goes from right to left. Um, reading it goes right to left, I'm sorry, because I took this as a selfie, like a self timer. <laughs> so I'm actually gonna show you I didn't plan to, but I'm going to show you how to use the flip tool to flip the image as well. So you're going to go over to your tools, your toolbox, and you're going to go to the flip tool. It looks like two rectangles side by side with arrows pointing away from each other. So you're going to click on that, and then you're going to just click in the image, and it'll flip it. Okay? So now it's flipped and you have the vertical option as well as the horizontal option. So if you realize it flips the wrong way, it's probably because your flip options were incorrect. So let me show you vertical. If I select the vertical, it'll flip that way. And then we just click it to move it back. So that is using the flip tool. So the next thing I always recommend is to use the crop tool, which is like two right angles crossed over each other to make a square. So that's what the um, tool looks like, the icon looks like. So just click on that. And then you want to crop everything that's um, not important to your design space. So by that, I mean all of this area. So I'm just going to click right outside of my body and drag. So click and drag, hold down the mouse button to right outside of where you want your picture to be cropped. Okay. So make sure that over here in the submenu that pops up under crop, so crops menu, that current layer only is selected. So you wanna make sure that this box is checked. Okay. And then you're just gonna click inside of your selection and that crops your image. Okay, so that's the crop tool. So now 
we want to remove the rest of the background because like I said, we want our background to be as professional as possible. So we're gonna use the free select tool, which is one of my favorite tools. If you have a solid background, you can use the fuzzy select tool, which looks like a wand with like fuzzy stuff on the end. Or you can use the select by color tool, which looks like um, three circles in a triangle shape with the top circle being in the square. But because I don't have a solid color background, I'm gonna use the free select tool, which I just mentioned. And that looks like a lasso. So if you hover over it, it says free select tool. So I'm actually gonna zoom in. I always use keyboard shortcuts, but if you want to zoom in, you can go to view, zoom, and then zoom in. But like I said, I like keyboard shortcuts. So I'm just gonna go to shift, hold down shift and hit the plus key until I get it as big as I want it to be. And you wanna zoom in pretty decent so that you can get as clear of a removal as possible. So once you've zoomed in, you're gonna pick a starting point. For some reason, I always start with the bottom right corner, but it may be different for me for you. With this image still selected, you just wanna click right outside of the background and then click your mouse and let go. So as you can see, once you let go, you have free reign to move wherever your next point needs to be. So you're just gonna click right inside of the edge of your body or the uh, image or the item product, whatever it is that you're wanting to remove the background from. And then click and move your mouse to the next point. So as you can see, I'm staying on the inside edge of my body because if I get right on the edge or right outside of it, it's gonna start pulling all of these extra colors from my background into my image and we do not want that to happen. Oh, so that's still my body y'all. I don't know why I was following the white. So if you happen to mess up like I did, you do not always have to start over. You can just start moving the points that you need to be um, in the correct position. So what that means is if I just click on this point to move it over to the purple outline of me, all you have to do is click and move it to the next point. So it's really simple. And then you just scroll up. So click, move to the next point. And like I said, this usually is the most tedious part, the most difficult part, because you want to be as crisp as possible and you want to be as zoomed in as possible. So it does take a little longer. However, this is my favorite part because I know my design is going to be clean. So just keep following the inside edge of your body or whatever you're removing the background from. It could be a pet, a product, another person, some random clip art, but this is my process. Uh-oh. For some reason, my computer just jumped. So I'm just gonna move that point over. No worries. Like I was saying, do not panic if you happen to get a point that goes to the wrong spot. So you can see I just fixed that, no worries.
And with curls, I usually just cut out all the extra. And you can just scroll around the image to get to different parts of your canvas, which is also known as your design space. And we're almost there. Stay inside the edge, like I said before. And then you're gonna click on a point right outside of the image like I just did. So as you can see, I have two points outside of the image. So to connect those points, you're just gonna click on the first point to get your marching ants. And by marching ants, that's this moving dotted line that you see now around that selection. And on Mac, I believe you have to hit function and then hold down function and then click on the starting point. So it's a little bit different on Mac. So once you get your marching ants, you want to make sure that you have an alpha channel selected. So an alpha channel is what's gonna make um, whatever you remove transparent. So remember that alpha channel will make the removal transparent. So with that layer selected, we're gonna right click. And if this is not um, grayed out, you need to click on it to gray it out. Mine is already grayed out, so that's cool. But if it isn't, you need to click on it so that it is selected, okay? So the next thing you wanna do is go to select, invert, and we're inverting because right now what's selected is our body and not the background, but we're removing the background. So we need to invert our selection. So select invert. And then you can hit delete on your keyboard. Or you can go edit clear. And if you're on Mac, you can do function um, delete on your keyboard, okay? So now you can see the background is removed, okay? So if you just move it around, let me turn the background layer off so that you can see that it is a transparent background now. And all I did to turn that layer off was just click on the eyeball next to that layer, just so there isn't any confusion. So then we're gonna to go to select because we still have marching and so this means that something is selected. So go to select, none. Or you can do shift control A on your keyboard or shift command A on Mac. So we're gonna zoom out. You can go to view, zoom, zoom out, or you can just hit minus on your keyboard. Okay, so the background has been successfully removed from our image. Now you can go to um, remove.bg if you wanna use that, but from my experience, it doesn't get the removal as clean as I would like it because I'm a little OCD. <laughs> um, because sometimes it'll remove too much of the background or it doesn't remove enough of the background to where I'm still going in to clean it up with this process anyway. So I just do this process all at once. Okay, so the next steps is to move your image to wherever you want it to be. 
So you use the move tool, which is the crossbar icon and just click on the layer and just move it to where you want it to be. You can always move this later um, because I'm pretty sure this is gonna change as I progress through my design. So the next thing that I do is add a background to this because right now it's transparent where we have this solid background and I don't want my background to be that. So I'm actually gonna remove this background by selecting it and then hitting the X at the bottom of the layers window. As you can see, delete this layer pops up. And let's go ahead and save one, one more time so that we don't lose our background removal. So I'm gonna go online. Where's my mouse? There we go. To find me a background. So I always go to pmgtree.com for my backgrounds and I do have an affiliate link. So if you wanna get an account through me, that would be amazing. I'll post that below the video as well. But for now, let's go through how to find them. So I like purple, if y'all didn't notice. So I'm just going to find like a purple background. So just type in purple background. And this can be whatever you're looking for. So you can scroll through. Ooh, I like this one. So if you do not have an account with PNG, ooh, I like that one too, but that's not what I'm going for for today's design. So just scroll through, see what you like best. Okay, if you don't have an account, what I was about to say is, I think they'll allow two downloads per day. But for you who are very active with designing, you're probably going to need a lot more than that. So that's why I say to go ahead and create your account uh, with your lifetime membership. And as I said, I do have an affiliate link that I will post. I'm going to actually use this smoke effect. So because I have an account, I, should, I can go ahead and download it. It'll say something different, like one of two, if you don't have an account. And as you can see, it saved, it downloaded really quickly in my um, toolbar down here and it's done. So then we're gonna go back to GIMP and we're gonna open that download. So we're gonna go to file, open as layers again. Remember, always open as layers when you're working on one design. Open as layers. And then you're gonna go to your downloads folder, wherever that is, and find that image. Or if you moved it to a different folder already, that's fine too. Open. And there is that background. So we're gonna do the same thing we did with our um, image, our photo. Use the scale tool. Small square pointing to a larger square. Click on the edges and just drag it to fill your design space. So you can definitely go outside of your design space to fill it. Click scale. So you can use the move tool to move this layer around to different parts of the image that you want to use. Okay, I like this part. And you can also use the alignment tool, which is right beside the move tool to snap it into different positions. So once you select the alignment tool, which looks like a bar charge or something like that, you can click on that layer you want to move. You'll see squares on each uh, corner. So then you can just choose whether you want it to be to the right so it pops up here, so you can see that. You can do center, left, top, bottom. There's not much of a difference in this particular image. So it's not moving too, too much. 
but I like the right line. I like this part of the smoke. So I know you're wondering like, oh no, where my image of the person or the product or whatever, where'd that go? It's just down a layer. So you wanna move this layer for the background that you're gonna use down. So make sure that selection or the layer selected and then just hit the down arrow at the bottom of your layers menu. So now your image is the top layer. Okay. So the next thing we wanna do is add some text. So you're gonna do that by using the text tool. So the text tool looks like a bolded capital A. So click on that. You can see the new menu that pops up once you click. And it's actually already on the font that I wanna use, but I'm gonna show you how to change it if you don't want to use a certain font that's already defaulted. So you're gonna click on the square under the word text beside the word font. And you can see all of the different fonts installed on your computer. So as I'm scrolling, you probably see some that you've never heard of before. That's because these are um, respective to my computer. And you can download your fonts to your computer. Now, I usually find my fonts on Google Fonts or thefont.com. So that's D-A-F-O-N-T dot com. So then you just go in and select the font type that you want. Make sure it's selected. And then you're gonna click inside of your design space or your canvas and start typing. Now, when you start typing, um, it is gonna show your active foreground color. So that's gonna be the color that you're gonna start typing in. So as you can see, that's super duper small. All you have to do to increase the size and make sure that your text is still editable is to go in and double click, highlight everything, and then use this box that pops up to increase, or if it's too big, decrease your font size to where you want it to be. So there's no specific number that you should choose every time because it's gonna differ depending on the font style and the size of your canvas or your um, design space, okay? So if I wanted to change this color with this still highlighted, I can click on this box here to where it says change color of selected text when I hover over it, click on that box and just choose the color you wanna change it to. So you can go in and select the different colors you want, play around with everything. If you know the HTML code, you can put it in here and then hit okay. But I'm actually good with the white, so I'm gonna leave it to the six Fs, click okay. And then to create another layer, that moves separately of this one, I'm gonna use the text tool again and I'm just gonna click somewhere else, not in this text layer. So I'm on my next layer to say blueprint. As you can see, it's still small. I'm gonna increase the size, I highlight it. So I double click inside of that box to highlight. And I actually want this to be a cursive. So you can change the font here. Or if you know the font, you can go in and change the font in the pop-up. So, but let's go ahead and change it in our toolbox options. And the font I wanna use, which I absolutely love, is Black Sword. So that's what that looks like. And if it moves some of your text off of the design space, that's okay. 
Use the move tool again, which looks like the crossbars. And drag it to the position you want it to be. And I'm actually gonna move this up too. So I'm just clicking the different layers to move them. Okay, so those are text layers. So I showed you how to change the size, the style, um, and how to change the color and how to move them. So that's that. So the next thing I'm gonna do is save it again, file save. We don't wanna lose our work. And another thing, you can also align text as well, like how we did the background. So if you use the alignment tool and click on a layer you wanna move, and that layer has to be towards the top of your layers menu to actually work like this, you can center it or move it to where you want it to be that way. But I'm good where it was. So I'm gonna undo, edit, undo, because I like the little stack look. So then, I want to do a little outline or a shadow on my text. So with the layer, the text layer selected that I want to edit, I want to go to filters over here in the uh, top menu. Light and shadow. And then you can do either drop shadow or long shadow. And I'm gonna show you the difference. So let's say I wanted the word blueprint to have a long shadow. It's gonna show your preview if you have preview selected in the box that uh, pops up. Select the color that you want the shadow to be by clicking in this box right beside where it says color. Selecting the color that you want it to be. So as you can see, if I choose purple, that's what my background or shadow is gonna look like. Click okay. And then if you wanna change the length of the shadow, you can change that here by either clicking around the length bar or you can use the up and down arrows. I actually liked where it was at 100. So I'm gonna go in and you can type the size you wanna change by highlighting and then typing. So those are different ways to change the length. And then you can change the angle as well, which is the way that the shadow falls behind your text layer. So that's pretty cool. And I actually want mine to be up like it just was so that it kind of cuts into the word backdrop to make it look more like it's popping off the screen. And then you're gonna click on, okay. So that's pretty simple, right? So let's say I wanna add a drop shadow to my text layer that says backdrop. So I'm gonna click on that layer, go to the filters. And let's say real quick that I wanted to duplicate this same style of um, shadow. You would just go to filters and repeat long shadow and it'll do exactly what you did on the first one. And that's kind of cute, kind of like it, but that's not what I was going for when I said I was gonna show you both. So I'm gonna to go to edit, undo. Then I'm gonna go back to filters, light and shadow, and then choose drop shadow. So you can see that option as well. So click on drop shadow. And then the color, let's say I wanna do that purple as well, just for the sake of this tutorial. And then we're gonna, increase the opacity or opacity, have we pronounced that word? 
by clicking in this box or using the up and down arrows. And this is just gonna help you see um, the shadow a little better. But right now, you can barely see it. Let me um, zoom in. So give me a second. Zoom in. So y'all can see what I mean. So filters, light and shadow, drop shadow, color change. So you can see very vaguely the color. So I'm gonna increase the opacity. So now you see it, you can see it now. Let's increase the blur radius. So that's where I was actually wanting to show you all. So you can see that it gives you more of a glow effect now. And that's what I'm looking for with the drop shadow. And you can also change the different angles as well. For drop shadow though, it's gonna show you the X and Y axis. I don't know why it's different, but that's what it does there. So you can just click around it to where you want it to be. Blur radius to where you want it to be. So this is all personal preference. Click around as, as you see fit. Click okay. Zoom out. Or you can just hit the minus key on your keyboard. Let's save it so we don't lose any work. And bam. So the last thing I'm going to do is just add some clip art. So I'm going to go to file. Again, open as layers. Always remember when you're working on one design, open as layers. And then I'm going to find my Blueprint logo. Use the Move tool to move it to where I want it to be. And just move my other layers around. And I really like this other graphic called the Starburst. Like, I feel like it just sets off any design. So let me find it. Mm -hmm. You should definitely organize all your graphics into folders so that you can find them easily. So there's my Starburst. Use the Move tool to move around. And I like to have a couple different Starbursts. So you can duplicate this layer. So with the layer you want to duplicate, select it. Click on this image beside the down arrow. It looks like a square on top of another square. It says create a duplicate of this layer. Click that. And then you can use the move tool again to move it to where you want it to be. And the last thing I want to do, I actually want to add my URL on this. So I'm going to add another text layer, capital bolded A. And then I want it to be the first font, which is the agency font. If I can find it. There we go. Double click in there to highlight it all. Increase the size. Use the move tool to move it around. Let's say I want this to be a little bigger. So use the scale tool. So now, once you've learned the preliminaries, you can just start moving stuff and editing stuff around as you see fit. Okay. So that is my complete design. I've shown you how to remove background from images, how to add text, and how to add backgrounds to text or shadows to text, how to how to insert other graphics, um, how to do the background. And I'm also gonna show you one more thing because I just like doing this and that's um, rotating the text. So let's say I wanted this blueprint 
layer to go from um, bottom left up to the top right. So I'm gonna select this layer, the text layer. And then there is a rotate tool, which looks like two rectangles and two curved arrows showing that it's rotating. So then you can click on the corner and drag to the place you want it to be, to the position you want it to be, click rotate. And now it's rotating. Okay, so go to file, save. And then the very last thing that you need to do is to save it as a JPEG so that you can have the flattened image of this design to upload to the vendor of your choice. So when you're looking to get your backdrop printed or if you wanna print them yourself. So you wanna to go to file, export as. So export is different from save. Go to file, export as. And then you'll see the name of your design um, file but you wanna change the very ending to JPG. Or if you wanna save it as a PDF or a PNG, this is the same steps you need to take. But for me and most vendors, we use JPG. So just remove this ending. After the dot, type in JPG. Click on export at the bottom. You're gonna get a pop-up. Okay, so click on export again. And you've created your um, flattened image file that can be used to print because you can't send this file over. This is solely to design. So I'll show you that I have it saved. Let's see what folder I saved it in. So today is the second. Here is my JPG file. If I click it, here is my flattened image. I can't do anything. I can't edit this. So that's what you want to happen. Okay. So that's how that works. I hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial. I've shown you how to add your images, a background, add text. Um, remove the background from images and add shadowing to your text. You can also do that with the photo layer as well. So yeah, it's completely up to you to design what you have in mind and create for you or your customer. So thanks for watching.